Good morning, saints. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We give Him glory again this morning for allowing us to meet again and hear His Word and study His Word. And so we just give Him great grace and glory today. And I would just like us to start by reading in the book of Proverbs. Um, it speaks about the wisdom of God. And I implore you to go and read it for yourself. Um, and I'm going to read uh, verse 12 until verse 17. Uh, this is the NIV. It reads, I wisdom dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is, is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Verse 14 says, Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight, I have power. By me kings reign and rulers issue decrees that are just. By me, princes govern, and nobles, all who rule in the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me and find me. And so I just want to speak about wisdom, even as we start this day, that may the wisdom of God um, fill us, even in every area of our lives. May his wisdom be with us, even as we study his word. He says in his word here in Proverbs chapter 8 that those that love wisdom, he loves as well. And as you read the, the verses that follow, uh, we find out that by wisdom, God created uh, the heavens and the earth. So wisdom has walked with God from eternity. And so whatever we want to create, whatever we want to do with our lives and in our lives, in our families, in all that we do, we need wisdom. If wisdom walked with God and created the heavens and the earth and all what we see, that was created from nothing into what we can carnally see now, it means that we need wisdom in everything that we do and we find that wisdom walks with God. And so this morning our prayer is that God fills us with his wisdom in every area of our lives. Um, he says here in verse, I'm just going to read verse uh, 18. He says, With me are riches and honor, uh, enduring wealth and prosperity, my fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. And so when we possess wisdom, when we walk with wisdom, God says it's better than rubies. It's better than silver. It's better than gold. He says uh, with uh, wisdom there is uh, prosperity. And so we, 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 we don't seek prosperity, but we seek wisdom. And with wisdom comes everything that uh, uh, we, we aspire uh, for. So with prosperity, with wisdom comes prosperity, comes wealth, uh, comes all the things that we need in our daily lives here on earth. And so we just seek his wisdom this morning. And we thank God that uh, he will give it to us. He says in his word as well that uh, uh, whoever seeks wisdom, let him ask and it will be given to him. And so we know that uh, when we ask in faith, when we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, it will be given to us from a sincere heart. And so this morning we are looking at Revelation chapter number 9. Um, and this chapter gives an account of the, of the blowing of the fifth and the sixth trumpet. 
we've gone through uh, the five trumpets that have been blown already and found out what happens there and so now we are in chapter 9 where the blowing of the fifth and the sixth trumpets are and verse 1 says and the fifth angel sounded that means sounded his trumpet and i saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth by this star is meant the antichrist and so by whether this is the western or the eastern uh, antichrist um, there's a debate there whether it's the romish antichrist or Mohammed, meaning also Mohammed. But perhaps both are intended as they were ruling or reigning at the same time. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, which shows that this could not be a, a literal star in a sense, but must design or must mean a man or a body of men by the bottomless pit is meant hell itself or hades of which the beast arose and into which satan will be cast when we read in the in revelation chapter 11 verse 7 and by the key is designed the power of it uh, the opening or the closing of it someone who has the power over death or Hades. Uh, this kind of key that is spoken of here is a different key from what was given to Peter. Peter was given the keys of the kingdom of heaven and this key that is spoken of here is the key of Hades, uh, of the bottomless pit. Uh, it is the key, key of ignorance and the depths of Satan, the bottomless pit where uh, the Antichrist rule and reign and live. Verse 2 says, And he opened the, bos the bottomless pit with the key that was given to him, which means that he did not possess the key himself. It was given to him by him who has power and authority over everything and who is god himself seated on his throne he made use of uh, his universal power over all bishops of the church and uh, in enacted laws and issued decrees and made articles of faith and imposed them on men's consciences and obliged all to submit to his hellish principles and practices that were all ungodly and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of great furnace which may design the false doctrine that uh, he had and spread and the superstition and the superstitions of worship uh, which sprang from the decrees of the popes and councils and of Mohammed as well and smoke being a dark thin vapor and very troublesome to the to the eye and the, uh, and the nose and, and of a perishing nature which soon vanishes away these are rightly expressed uh, uh, by it as well for they are hidden things of darkness and the authors of them are who such who are from the dark council by words without knowledge they are empty things they have no solidity and no substance in them. They are comparable to wood and hay and stubble and smoke and wind, things that perish and, and move away and very troublesome and offensive to all that are enlightened persons, that are enlightened and have the smell and savor of divine things, uh, 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 things that will perish and will not last. And the word of God continues to say, And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke and pit. So Christ, the son of righteousness, was greatly obscured by the Romish Antichrist, by their false doctrine and worship in the offices and merits of grace. 
him taking upon himself as the head of the church, as we still see as well, him uh, establishing himself as infallible interpreter of scripture, uh, who gives a uh, pardon, who thinks uh, he's able to give pardon uh, uh, to particular people, and particularly by the doctrines of merit and justification uh, by the works of one's hands. This was also by uh, done by Muhammad who exalted himself uh, as a prophet, as a great prophet, called himself uh, and made himself as a great prophet uh, as both way uh, the air that the church received, the air of darkness uh, and the scriptures which are the breath of God given by inspiration of him and by him these were grievously clouded by these two by the uh, uh, roman uh, popes and muhammad as well uh, they were wretchedly perverted uh, both by the dec their decrees uh, at this time and the alcoran uh, of muhammad which is uh, the quran verse 3 says and there came out of the smoke locusts uh, not literally locusts for these were instructed not to meddle with the grass nor are these meant by uh, the devils intended uh, here though they may be compared to locusts as well nor are we speaking here of the gods or the vandals that were spoken of in the previous chapter but here I meant the Western locusts, uh, uh, the Western, which means the clergy of the Roman Empire, the cardinals, the bishops, the priests, the monks, and the friars of every order. These were not instituted by Christ himself, but rose out of the bottomless pit from the anti-Christian smoke of councils, decrees, and traditions and are fitly or rightly compared to locusts because of their number, which have been almost as the sand of the sea, innumerable, and have spread themselves all over the nations of the earth that have gone by the name of Christianity but are not. And for their devouring nature, living in plenty and in idleness upon the face of the land, in the best commons and glutting themselves with the spoils of others, devouring widows' houses and uh, impoverishing countries and kingdoms uh, wherever they go and uh, wherever they come. And unto them was given power as the scorpions and the earth have power that is to torm torment them by the striking them, by striking them with their stings in their tails these are the serpentile kind so these men are serpentile they have an innocent and harmless look but are soon angry they have stings in their tails which are always striking with they may uh, so that they may miss no opportunity to sting whomever they come across this may be applied to the western locusts the monks and the friars who are the seed of the serpent and who by good words and fair speech they deceive the hearts of many they deceive the hearts of the simple they have a form of godliness and but they speak lies in a hypocrisy and lie in wait to deceive and being provoked are full of wrath and anger and strike very hard with their abominations and excommunications as well so they look uh, and they seem uh, uh, godly but uh, uh, in their hearts they are filled uh, with darkness and abominations and evil and as we read they come uh, from the bottomless pits their intentions are not righteous but are those uh, that come from an evil heart and evil desire and evil seed that comes from the bottomless pit 
hell and Hades itself. Verse 4 says, And it was commanded them by Christ that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, meaning that they should not hurt uh, true believers, true Christians, uh, true believers uh, uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, and uh, these, these believers are, are compared to grass uh, and uh, uh, yet as being uh, the very company that God keeps for himself. Uh, so they were uh, uh, commanded not to hurt uh, these true Christians. Neither any green thing, those uh, that have true faith in Christ Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. neither any tree or the tree of righteousness, uh, the mm -hmm. true believers uh, in Christ Jesus uh, are compared to trees uh, planted by rivers of water, as in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 8. Uh, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads, meaning the anti-Christian party. So these uh, uh, scorpions should hurt only those that are anti-Christ, meaning the Romish uh, apostasy or the Saracens, uh, the, a nation that came from Haga, whom which we find uh, 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 had a child with Abram uh, by the design of Sarah. So these, they came, they became a nation uh, and, and they called themselves Saracens. Verse 5 says, and to them it was given uh, that they should not kill them uh, as the power of the locusts was limited. So these men were given power to hurt those without uh, the seal of God uh, on their foreheads, but they should not kill them uh, in respect of persons. Uh, they, should, they can cause mischief, but they cannot uh, kill them. They can annoy them, but uh, not kill them completely but that they should be tormented five months. Not a literal five months is meant here, but uh, seeing that a, a time that a locust can live is but only five months, which designs or speaks to the entire life of a locust, which means that as long as the locusts live, they may annoy, they may torment these men without the seal of God on their foreheads, which means uh, as long as they they were around so as long as the the, the muhammad and the, the roman empire and the saracens were uh, around or alive they were given power to torment those men without the seal of god on their foreheads and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man which gives great pain and uh, distress, uh, which is a uh, uh, stings, uh, uh, their stings are poisonous to men. It signifies how troublesome and uh, afflictive those locusts were to be among them uh, that lived among uh, those scorpions. Verse 6 says, And in those days men shall seek death, or they may desire to die and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall f flee from them death uh, will be preferred uh, to a miserable life uh, that uh, they were living among the scorpions among uh, muhammad among the roman empire among the saracens where it was a horrible life uh, uh, compared to a sting of the scorpions verse 7 says and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses the heads of locusts especially of some of them are very much like the heads of horses and here are compared to horses prepared unto battle locusts sometimes have an appearance in the form of armies they have appeared in a form of armies and have marched in great order with their leader before them and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold 
and this shape some locusts have appeared to which the allusion seems to be in in the book of nahum chapter 3 verse 17 they crowned men like as uh, the locust it may respect the triple crown of the head of them because there were three of them as we spoke of the caps of the cardinals as well uh, the matters of the bishops in the church and the shaven pates of the priests in the form of crowns and their faces were as the faces of men which may be expressive of the uh, uh, fallible carriage of muhammad and his followers especially to the christians of his great pretensions to the holiness and religion and of the plausible and insinuating ways and artful methods used by him to gain men upon himself and being applied to the clergy of the church of rome may denote uh, uh, they are to show their humanity and their pretentious uh, pretentiousness as well to men verse 8 says and they had hair as the hair of women so some locusts have smooth others have hairy heads this fitly points at the arabians or saracens as well who used to wear long hair without cutting it and attired as men so they dressed as women as well and have their names also from women this may also point at the effeminacy of the western locusts uh, the monks uh, and the friars as well who dress more like women and when you picture a monk you see them dressed in a, uh, these brown uh, uh, dresses uh, going down to their ankles and and many of them claim uh, the virgin mary for their uh, patroness as well and their teeth were as the teeth of lions which may denote the ravages and the devastations of the Saracens in the empire, robbing, robbing men as well among and inside the empire. Verse 9 says, And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, meaning uh, 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 the armor which the Saracens wore. Uh, the colors of it looked uh, as breastplates as well uh, the colors the breastplates uh, 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 the breastplates were not breastplates of righteousness faith and love no in defense of truth but against righteousness against uh, the truth and some think the iron color may denote the color of their habits their black garments uh, coming from uh, uh, the the kingdom of darkness and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle the sound of locusts uh, when they fly or march in large companies uh, is very great so it is compared to this as well it is compared to chariots uh, because when they fly they make a lot of noise and the uh, uh, ethiopian version here re uh, says the sound of their feet this may be expressive of the swift and rapid uh, uh, incursions of the saracens and of the dreadful alarms to the nations which the invasions made so they made a lot of invasions to different people and may be applied to the noisy uh, 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 declamations when they approached each nation verse 10 says and they had tails like unto scorpions uh, uh, and there were stings in their tails either uh, in the sort of them as the saracens or the papists or in their doctrines uh, the prophetic being the tale in isaiah chapter 9 verse 15 with which both muhammad who set himself up as a prophet and the romish clergy who set up their decrees and unwritten traditions above the word of god have poisoned 
and they have destroyed a multitude of souls in the process. And their power was to hurt men five months, as explained in verse 5. Verse 11 says, And they had a king over them by whom is meant the false prophet Muhammad, who was at the head of the Saracens, and led them on to commit the outrageous act as they did and of the pope of rome uh, who sets himself up as king uh, in the uh, in the west as well for the romish antichrist reigns there which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the hebrew tongue is abaddon but in the Greek tongue had his name Apollyon, both which signify destroyer. So the name, the words Abaddon and Apollyon both mean destroyer in the Hebrew, uh, 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 in the Hebrew word, in the Hebrew and the uh, 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 um, Greek as well, and are very a- applicable both to Muhammad who by his imposture has been the cause of the destruction of multitude of souls, as well as by his wars and those of the Saracens and Turks, as well, and to whom, uh, to him, the Pope of Rome, maybe the name, uh, it can truly apply to him as well. Verse 12 says, one woe is past, and we are reminded in the previous chapter uh, that uh, there were three woes that had to come uh, before uh, the seventh trumpet was blown. One of the three woe trumpets, the first of them, that is in the vision which John had, not the thing itself designed by it. And behold, there came two woes more hereafter. So after this woe that has passed of the locusts, two woes are to come under the blowing of the sixth and the seventh trumpets. Verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded his trumpet. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, the altar of incense covered with gold and here uh, uh, and elsewhere is called the golden altar when we are reminded uh, in the tabernacle in the physical physical tabernacle which was built by hands there was a golden altar which was a figure of the intercession of Christ for on this altar incense was offered which was typical of the prayers of the saints offered by Christ through his mediation. Verse 14, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, he had prepared himself to sound and had sounded his trumpet that had been given to him by whom who sat on the throne God himself. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So not the four angels in Revelation chapter 7 uh, that stood upon the four corners of the earth that held uh, the four winds of the earth. So not these angels are spoken of here. But, uh, but uh, men are here meant, as appears from uh, verse 16 of chapter n- uh, number 9, and particularly the Turks, uh, as most interpreters agree, uh, who dwell on the other side of the uh, river, of the Euphrates, uh, Euphrates River, and were let loose uh, or suffered to pass over that river into the Eastern Empire, to ruin and to destroy it as they uh, actually did. They are called angels here because of their might and the force, uh, their power 
and their strength that uh, they had, which uh, they bore uh, before all men, and for their great swiftness as well, and their rapidity uh, in the victories and uh, conquests uh, which uh, uh, the Ottoman family uh, obtained hereafter. Now these are said to be bound uh, in the great river Euphrates, uh, which river is to be literally understood uh, and uh, is the same uh, which that is called uh, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 14 uh, and ran through Mesopotamia and uh, Chaldea uh, and was the boundary of the Roman Empire. So it was fixed uh, there and beyond which the Turks before the this time did not go, uh, that, that really go, went uh, beyond. But now they were given power to go beyond and cross over it. Verse 15. And the four angels were loosed. The time had come. Now the time that had been fixed had now come. The decrees of God had now come and enabled them to cross over the Euphrates River. Uh, they were let loose uh, like so uh, many fairies uh, in, in the little time of Iran and destroyed the entire empire by the power that they had, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men which may in general denote or speak to their readiness, uh, their vigilance as well, and uh, their quick dispatch, which means also uh, they were ready wherever they were, ready to come and conquer. Uh, they lay for a good while hovering over the banks of the river as if they were waiting for an order to come, for them to be able to come and and, and cross over it and uh, go beyond it uh, or a commission to go over it. Uh, they were ready not only at a year's or a month's or a, a day's time, but in, at an hour's uh, a warning and all of them together as soon as ever they had the divine permission. They lost no time. They wasted no time. They improved every opportunity every year, every month, every day, every hour to settle and enlarge their dominion to ruin uh, to the ruin of others in a very short time in like an hour's time they were ready as well to come and come upon other nations verse 16 says and the number of the army of the horsemen this shows that the four angels before mentioned were men and design and generals of armies and armies of men, even of horsemen. The armies of the Turkish uh, uh, consisted of horses and what f uh, to show uh, for use, they used them in their armies. They had generally doubled the number of horses and mules as of men and they are very good. They were very good horsemen and uh, uh, very dexterous uh, at leaping on and off their horses were two hundred thousand thousand which means uh, there were two hundred million of them or twenty thousand brigades of ten thousand each that is a very large and uh, a very large number almost infinite and incredibly large uh, like the army of Gog and Magog at the sand of the sea found in uh, Revelation chapter 20 verse 8. And I heard the number of them. So John heard a certain number of them. Verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of uh, a brimstone, which may be understood either literally of their external breastplates, which being of polished iron, 
or this may be understood of their internal breastplate and the disposition of their mind, having in their breast, breast nothing but wrath, fury, dissolution, and destruction. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of a lion gaping and rolling for their prey. And out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone, which may be referred to either to their horses or the horse or the horsemen themselves, or both. Verse 18. And by these three was the third part of men killed. By these three plagues, men were killed. By the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth with meaning the firing of their guns so fire came out of the mouth of their guns verse 19 for their power is in their mouth meaning their power is in their guns the fire that came out of of their guns and in their tails which may design their foot soldiers which were as the tail of their horses and who sometimes did great service so the horses would lead and then there would be uh, foot soldiers that came behind the horses and had heads every tail had a head to it which may be understood of the officers of the foot soldiers or of the priests and the teachers of the mohammedan uh, religion and with them they do hurt with their guns the power in their mouth they did hurt to the bodies of men and with their false doctrines their tales they did hurt the souls of men verse 20 and the rest of them which were not killed by these plagues by whom are meant the worst and anti-Christian parties, and such of them as were not plagued, harassed, and they were destroyed by the Turks, as in Germany, as well as France and Spain, Italy, and etc., yet repented not of the works of their hands, their idols, their images of saints departed which their hands had made the goodness of god in saving them from the uh, depredation, depredations of the turks should have led them to repentance for their idolatrous worship of images but they did not they did not uh, leave uh, uh, their false doctrines uh, seeing that god had uh, uh, had saved them from the antichrist but they did not uh, leave their uh, uh, falsehood that they should not worship devils or demons meant here a sort of deities with the heathens that uh, uh, mediated between the superior gods and men and here design angels and saints departed which the papists worship and use as mediators and intercession for them. And so uh, these men did not depart from worshipping angels, uh, seeing that God has, had saved them, but they did not leave the worshipping of angels. They did not stop the worshipping of angels. They did not stop uh, the, the, the worshipping of departed saints. They did not stop the worshipping of departed people. And this is no other than worshipping uh, devils in God's account because uh, God calls us to worship him only. He calls us uh, to worship him uh, only as creator only uh, and to him it is the same as worshipping uh, devils and is downright idolatry in the face of God and the doctrine of it is the doctrine of devils. 
and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which are the several materials of which the popish images are made and what aggraves uh, 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 the stupidity and the worshippers of these images and of the persons represented by them is that uh, these are such which neither can see nor hear uh, so these images uh, 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 that they they worship these departed souls these departed people that they worship uh, uh, cannot hear them they cannot see them they cannot uh, hear their prayers nor stir one foot to help them or assist them so these golden uh, articles or these departed people cannot hear their prayers cannot see they cannot uh, walk they cannot uh, speak verse 21 says neither repent they of their murders of the saints and martyrs of jesus and uh, so they killed uh, the, the 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 worshipers of jesus christ uh, uh, with whose blood the western antichrist is made drunk nor of their sorceries uh, so jezebel the whore of rome has been famous for by which she had deceived all nations many of the popes of rome as well have been necromancers given to the magic art and have entered into covenant and have a familiarity with the devil and one part of the romish service lies in exorcisms conjunctions and the enchantments and which they still continue doing at this day or in this day nor of their fornications so all sort of uncleanliness not only simple fornication but adultery incest sodomy and all unnatural unnatural lust they did not uh, move away from this they did not stop uh, all these kinds of uncleanliness uh, uh, after being saved by the power uh, in the in the in the hand of god nor of their thefts who under pretense of granting indulgences and pardons and praying souls out of pur purgatory with other tricks cheat men of their money pillage and plunder their estates and devour uh, widows houses they rob men of their substance and make uh, a, a merchandise of their souls uh, now all these iniquities the puppies in the in eastern empire were guilty of for which the turks as a scourge were let in upon it and destroyed it and yet uh, the western papacy who did not suffer in these calamities took no warning by them did not repent of their sins and reform their practices but went on and still go on in the same wicked way and by their their hardness and uh, of their hearts they treasure up wrath against the day of wrath now what is purgatory Purgatory in the Roman Catholic doctrine is a place or state of suffering inhabited by the souls of sinners who are expiating their sins before going to heaven. What is expiating? Is it is to make amends or reparation for guilt of wrongdoing. It is a, the conditional process or place of purifying or temporary punishment in which according to the medieval Christian and Roman Catholic believe the souls of those who die in a state of grace are made ready for heaven. Now we know that this uh, purgatory is not biblical. As we read in Luke chapter 23, when Jesus Christ was uh, on the cross, verse 39 says, One of the criminals who had been uh, hanged on a cross beside him kept hurling abuse at him, saying, 
Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us from death. Verse 40 says, But the other one rebuked him, saying, Do not even do you not even fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? We are suffering justly because we are getting what we deserve for what we have done, but this man has done nothing wrong. Verse 42. And he was saying, Jesus, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. Verse 43 says, Jesus said to him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, today will you will be with me in paradise which means as what as soon as one soul departs it's either they go to heaven or they go to hell as we read in luke chapter 6 uh, uh, in luke chapter 16 the, the 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 story of the rich man and lazarus it says uh, as soon as the rich man died his soul was taken to Hades and Lazarus, as soon as he died, he was taken into heaven. Verse 25 says, But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your time you received good things, while Lazarus received bad things, but now he's comforted here and you are in agony. Verse 26, And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us, which means uh, there is no such place as purgatory. One, as soon as they depart, is either they go to heaven or they go to hell or Hades. And so uh, by the grace of God, when the souls uh, of, of, of those that have chosen Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior will leave this earth and go into heaven by the grace of God. And so we praise God for his word this morning. We praise him for his teaching us and, uh, and, his, and the study that he's given to us this morning of chapter 9 uh, of uh, the book of Revelation. And so in the morning tomorrow, the 23rd, uh, we'll be going through chapter number 10. And so we implore you to go uh, to our YouTube channel. And, and view our previous videos and also to our website onekingdom.wixsite.com it is onekingdom.wixsite.com where we have all of our notes that can be downloaded for free we also have more videos of our previous chapters and previous services that we have had that you can watch and download for yourself as well and so may god continue to fill you uh, with his wisdom uh, and grace this morning uh, as his grace are new each morning in Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed. Amen.